Now we can we will begin our study on differential outcomes in immigration, refugees, and citizenship Canada's decision. It is my pleasure to introduce the first witnesses of this important study. So in our first panel, we have Stephen Murens, immigration lawyer, coming here as an independent, Jennifer Maidema, Executive Director of Remember Ministries, and Dr. Uh, Christian, uh, President of African Scholars Initiative. Dr. Christian, you can please begin. You will have five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair and Member of the Initiative ASI Canada to make submission on your study. I will limit my opening remark to two main issues. First, the differential outcome in study visa decisions by IRCC relating to applications from Africa and secondly, the growing use of artificial intelligence technology by IRCC in visa processing. Uh, Madam Chair, data on study visa refusals from IRCC clearly shows that countries in Sub-Saharan Africa are most adversely impacted by differential outcome on study visa decisions by IRCC. The Polar Report revealed that systemic bias, discrimination, and racism account for this from outright reference to African countries as the Deity 30 by IRCC visa officers to outright branding of Nigerians as corrupt and untrustworthy. IRCC study visa policies have been designed in ways that makes it ever more difficult for people from Africa to be able to secure study visa to pursue education in Canada. In my appearance before this committee on 8 February 2022, I highlighted these discriminatory policies by comparing two visa application programs, the Student Direct Stream SDS and the Nigerian Student Express NSE, especially the differential or discriminatory financial requirements under the NSE program. In addition, I will also note the language requirements under the NSE program, which requires a Nigerian study visa applicant to undertake English language proficiency to prove to the visa officer that they are proficient in English language. This requirement is imposed notwithstanding that English is the only official language in Nigeria. It is the official language of instruction in all formal academic aid institutions in Nigeria. Foreign students from Nigeria are exempted from English language proficiency by all academic institutions in Canada, but not by IRCC. This subtle bias, discriminatory and differential study visa requirements inevitably result in adverse differential outcome in decisions, not just for Nigeria, but for Africa. My second submission relates to the growing use of computer software and artificial intelligence technology by IRCC in visa processing. ASI Canada is not for some use of AI technologies by IRCC. IRCC has in its possession great deal of historical data that can enable it to train AI and automate its visa application processes. But Madam Chair, there are serious concerns here. External study of IRCC, especially the Polara Report, has revealed systemic bias racism and discrimination in IRCC processing of immigration applications. Inevitably, this historical data in possession of IRCC is tainted by the same systemic bias, racism and discrimination. Now, the problem is that the use of this tainted data to train any AI algorithm will inevitably result in algorithmic racism, racist AI making immigration decisions. Uh, Madam Chair, as an assistant professor of AI and law at the University of Calgary Faculty of Law, I have spent the last three years researching algorithmic racism. And I can confidently state that the concerns raised here are legitimate and real. Any use of AI technology by IRCC should be subject to external scrutiny. IRCC should be subject to the oversight that will ensure and enhance transparency and fairness in the use of AI. In conclusion, we recommend an independent oversight of IRCC in two ways. One, 
an independent onboard person to oversee decisions of IRCC visa officers. Secondly, the establishment of an independent body of experts to oversee IRCC's use of advanced analytics and artificial intelligence technology in visa processing. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. I look forward to your questions on the issues that I have raised, as well as any other issue, question you may have on differential outcome on IRCC decisions. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chris.